This lesson is about energy. There are many, many different types of energy. There are two specifically that we'll be dealing with right now. The first is kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is energy of motion. Moving things have this particular type of energy. The equation for kinetic energy is Ke equals one-half mv squared, where Ke stands for kinetic energy, m is mass, and v is velocity. Let's take a look at the units. If we take a kilogram and we multiply it by the square of a meter per second, we end up with kilogram meter squared per second squared. This looks similar to some other units we've seen this year, but it's different. We have a special name for this unit. It's called a joule. Here's an example of a kinetic energy problem. What is the kinetic energy of a 1,350 kilogram car traveling 28 meters per second? As always, we'll start with the equation. We can substitute in our mass and velocity. And when we solve, remembering of course to square the 28 meters per second, we find that the car has a kinetic energy of 529,200 joules. The other type of energy we'll be learning about is potential energy, specifically gravitational potential energy. This is energy something has because of its position above the ground. The equation for potential energy is the weight of an object times the height of an object. This can also be written as mgh, the mass times the acceleration due to gravity times the height. Once again, let's take a look at the units. If we look at the equation mgh, we'll see that we would substitute in kilograms, meters per second squared, and meters. When we multiply all three, we end up with kilogram meters squared per second squared, which we have previously learned is a joule. Instead, if we look at the equation Fg times h, we see we would substitute in newtons times meters, and if you think back to September or October, you know that a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. When we multiply that by a meter, as we would expect, we end up with kilogram meter squared per second squared. Every form of energy that we'll learn about is measured in joules. Let's take a look at an example of a potential energy problem. How high would one have to lift a 95 Newton object in order to give it 684 joules of potential energy? We'll start with the equation, PE equals FGH. I've selected this form of the potential energy equation because I know the weight of the object, 95 newtons. I don't know the mass of the object. When I substitute in the energy and the weight, I can find that the height is 7.2 meters.